Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another equipment review. Hope you like this one. Anytime I find something interesting, I make a review. It's about the SDR Play, a software-defined radio front end, I'll call it, that goes from, it seems, below broadcast band all the way up to 2 gigahertz. And it has outpaced its competitors all of a sudden in the field of inexpensive SDRs. That's because it's a 12-bit device. The SDR dongles and other uh, cheap SDR receiver front ends you've seen have been 8-bit devices mostly, and this is one of the first really decent SDR front ends to come out at a, at a very low price. This means it's adequate in performance for reception of thousands of signals uh, all the way across the spectrum up to 2 gigahertz. It has a wider dynamic range and it has pre-selection filters on the receiver, which is a really strong feature. Uh, some of the more expensive SDRs out there don't really even have pre-selection filters, and that really helps the receiver perform well. It also has a preamplifier that's switched in at different dB rates, uh, and you can assign that to different frequency ranges. That's a pretty cool feature. Now, it's not a flex radio class SDR receiver, but you're paying very little for this, this little uh, device over here. It works on almost any PC platform, and it, uh, there's several packages out now which will run this little receiver. SDR Sharp is no longer supported, but SDR Console, HD SDR, and there's some other packages out there that will run this little thing. And new stuff is coming out all the time. Also, it's open for developers. and. Uh, I just saw that a digital FM radio utility was out there that will run this little receiver and I was decoding a digital uh, FM broadcast. Let's take a 30 second SDR lesson just to bring people that are newbies up to speed. You amateurs are going to hear a lot of redundant stuff in here. Bear with us. Here's the simplified block diagram. The antenna is connected to an RF amplifier and bandpass filters in the SDR play and this helps sort of linearize things to not overload the next stage, which is the A to D converter that samples that whole chunk of RF and turns it into ones and zeros. Then that goes to a processing unit, the CPU itself, which is a floating point mathematical dedicated processor ready to do exactly its job. Then of course you got to talk to the computer, so you need that USB circuit so you can plug a USB cable in and plug it into your PC. Then the PC runs software and this does all the decoding of the incoming signals, the digital signals. Now, more bits is better, like I said. 12 bits is absolutely minimum. And a very fast processor is also good because these dictate the minimum bandwidth that the SDR can handle and also the dynamic range of the signals from lowest to loudest signals. Now let's take a look at the box itself. The SDR Play is a really small box. It only has two connections, a gold-plated SMA receive antenna connector, you may want to get an adapter off of eBay or elsewhere to uh, SMA to BNC, make it a little easier on yourself, or a patch cable, and a USB connection. And this is the older style, larger plug, and um, the printer style, I'd call it. And it is powered over the USB. The SDR Play circuit board has very small surface mount ICs on it and a little coax jumper coming off the board to the SMA connector. Now, SDR Play is really what I call the SDR front end. It's the hardware digitizer and basic processing that hands off that data to a software package which has to run on your home computer. And this is the way SDRs work. And don't get it con confused with DSP, although DSP is certainly the way that the SDR functions internally. A radio with DSP is not an SDR, so just remember that in, in your mind there. Um, any software package which complies with the data communications protocol of this front end can use this as a front end of an SDR system. So it can be completed by several different SDR programs that you might run on your computer. Now installation is easy. First you install the API and the drivers from the site, which your SDR Play site has. And then go and download the type of software that you want to run to do the rest of the processing. I like SDR console, it's very full featured, but you can download them all and try them. And then install the EXTIO plugin so that the software you've just downloaded and fired up knows what receiver you're talking to, knows how to talk to it, and has it in its selection menus. So you're basically, the third part of it, installing that EXAL plugin from SDR Play puts that information into the directory where that SDR program that you just got 
is installed. Then, to fire up the SDR itself, you're just going to turn on the SDR program, select the receiver, which should show right there, showing in SDR console, select it, and select your bandwidth selection or sampling rate. 5 megahertz is absolutely fine on this if you have a good processor, say a quad core, and then hit the start and you're ready to go. Put in your frequency and start playing around. Let's take a look around SDR console, which is the best SDR program available now for the SDR play. This is the default display, and this is the one that I like to use. It makes sense, easy to understand, and let's take a look at the different things that are in it with our little mouse pointer here. As we notice on the top, we have traditional menus up here, and each one of these controls a different sub-selection of stuff that you can customize and change. Memories, things like that. We'll take a look at this in just a second. But right here is an important panel. It is the uh, DSP display. You see it's selected right over here. We can go with the Frequency Explorer or DSP options. Here are the modes that you're going to be receiving in. Each of these has a drop down for customization, like FM narrow for public safety, or FM broadcast, which is wider, or FM stereo. Sideband, upper and lower sideband. Above 10 megahertz, you're going to be in upper sideband. Below 10 megahertz, lower sideband. That's the convention. And your data modes. A lot of this stuff for you hams, this will be redundant, but for you newbies, you need to know this stuff. CW, of course, is Morse code. AM for your shortwave receive stations and aircraft in the 108 to 136 megahertz range. So, first thing you want to do, of course, is put in a frequency. So we put in the 20 meter amateur band here. We used our mouse. You can pick a digit and go left or right click on your mouse and increment or decrement that number. And it's pretty easy to get where you want to go like that. Say you found something you really like and you zoned in on it, you could always pop it up into a memory up here in the top left. You have nine sets of ten of these memories and you can save them and load them, sets of them. There's really, that means they're quite unlimited. Back to the home display. Um, of course, when you are in memories, you might want to sequester. Number one can be all amateur frequencies. Number two could be something else. Uh, FRS radio, public service, police, things like that. Shortwave radio stations, AM stations, FM stations. I have them segmented like that, just so it makes sense. And um, like I said, since you can save them, they're pretty much unlimited. Back to the home screen, the home menu screen. Uh, all of your DSP stuff, which is all the normal functions a receiver would have, are covered down here on the left, and those are uh, some are customizable with selections up here that can slide up and down, like your AGC, automatic gain control. You want slow for AM signals, slow for sideband signals, fast for Morse code signals, and you can adjust the dynamics of each one of those. Morse code, or continuous wave down there, has its own menu, and it, it's got uh, sub-selections that you can work with. Yeah. I'm not sure why we're not popping up on that right now. Anyway, there's your noise blankers and things like that. Anyway, you can open up each one of these, take a look at them, and experiment with them, and set them up the way you like them. I uh, can't hurt anything there. This here is a zoom in on the actual signal that you're seeing. The major uh, spectrum analyzer is down here, right in this section, and you're going to see the waterfall right over here, where you're going to see your signals over time in the last number of seconds. And that way you can see the width of them and stuff. This is the real-time display, which has stopped for some reason. If I enable this, then you hear the band itself. You're going to hear the activity on the band. And um, you can see these signals. I'm probably a little bit loud right now, but you could, you could pick a signal, find it here, and then double-click with your left mouse button. These are voice signals on 20 meters. And as soon as you do, you're going to see that you're, zo you're zoomed in on the top left display up here. Remember on sideband, you have to uh, really tune it correctly, so it'll sound real Donald Ducky unless you zone in. The amateur operators tend to go on even number frequencies, so pretty easy to zone in on them. They're not going to pretty much hang out on an, an odd number frequency, like 223, 225, all zeros like that. So if you get close, you can walk it in like that. Okay, we're a little bit low. Oops, <laughs> jump too fast. Anyway. You can turn it off by hitting that enable button, and then you're you're uh, you're still processing over here, but you're not displaying it on the zoom in, and you're not hearing it in the speakers. The most important thing to know about SDR console and working with the SDR play is that since it is a 12-bit machine, and it doesn't have a tremendous amount of dynamic range. That means it's capability of handling very strong, just very small signals, even with the, the pre-selection filters. You're going to have to watch this gain reduction control right, right over here, which is just your sensitivity control. With a decent antenna on FM, you're probably going to be down in the negative 65 range. With a decent antenna on the HF band, say 
AM uh, 1 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz for HF sideband reception on ham radio, you're going to be more in the 15 to 35, negative 35 range. This is the preamp over here, and this is how far down the signal has to be before the thing kicks in. It has suggested ranges, and you can sort of experiment around with that. The visual gain only affects the display, it seems. But this, if you're out of range and the thing's being overloaded, you're just going to hear splatter. You're not going to see signals well displayed on the screen. And you're going to just have all kind of problems. So if, you're, if you think, you're, I'm on the right frequency, I should be hearing this, mess around with the sensitivity control, and all of a sudden you'll move it up and down, and bam, the signal will lock up. And then your, your display will start looking correct on the bottom over here. Right now in 20 meters, uh, we're decoding a bunch of Morse code and, and RTTY signals on the bottom of the band. The span over here gives you the amount of display you're looking at on the spectrum analyzer across the bottom here. When the startup window happens, when you start this program, STR Play is capable of up to 8 megahertz, so you can pick 5 megahertz and just go real wide and see a ton of signals that causes your processor to really have to work more. Or you can say, really, 20 meter band, 14 megahertz on ham radio is only 300 kilohertz wide or so, 350. I'm just going to go that far so I can sort of see the signals even better. So you can change your span on the fly. And uh, as soon as we turn the enable, it starts coming out of the speaker over here, and you can just click on the signals. Now remember, when you're zoned in on a signal down here, uh, you can adjust the bandwidth up here, mouse dragging it. And you do want to conform the bandwidth to the width of the signal. So if I see a little signal over here, RTTY signal, I can actually draw the little box around it and make it exactly the right size to fit the, uh, the signal itself. There's an RTTY signal right there. I can take the bottom and the top of the window, the bandwidth window, and whoop, I went over right there. Zone in on it exactly perfectly. Now I, that really notches out everybody else. So that's that's the tremendous, amazing thing about uh, using an SDR radio like this. Uh, over here, you do have uh, VFO tuning or audio spectrum analyzer. You can start that and start looking at incoming signals. like so. That guy stopped transmitting. I'm going to go to Memories and go over to FM Radio here. Hit on a local station. And gee, all of a sudden I'm not seeing anything. And this is an anomaly of dealing with the SDR Play in some of these programs. It's having to send the data over on the USB to the SDR Play saying, hey, I changed frequencies. I need another pre-selection filter. It's some data over. But obviously there's some glitches in the software. And gee, I'm not seeing anything now. It's not working. So I'm going to go to Home, hit Stop, and hit start again to see if I see anything. Hmm, don't see anything. I'm going to be sure I'm on the right span. All right, I've got some signals in there now, but what I'm saying is sometimes you have to kill it, the entire program, and then reload the program, uh, and then it will bring it back. Here's your start screen. I'm going to set 5 megahertz sample rate to the width. Hit start, and it'll be all of a sudden a lot happier. And of course, you've got to be in the right zone on your sensitivity. So as soon as I click on a signal, I should be able to turn it on. And oh, we'll be on the right thing here. FM broadcast, audio spectrum, frequency 108.2. That's out of the band. So oh, let's go down to the FM band. Now, I can also go down here and use this and move down the band wholesale. Just click, click, click. All of a sudden, I'm seeing other signals across the FM broadcast band. I can, I can click on them. And then if I hit enable, but you, what, what people think about your program, but I you know, as, hear that as a coaching staff. All right, and there we have the bandwidths over here. So these are bandwidths corresponding to how wide of a window you're looking at. And it's very important to know what to do there. So 192 kilohertz is pretty typical for FM broadcasts. I made a custom one by hitting more, and I, I added a, a one for 155 kilohertz, which is really about as wide as the signal should be, by just hitting add putting a title, hitting the bandwidth that I wanted, which is 155,000, made 155K as my title, and now I've got it as a selection of the bandwidth over here. So you can do that on any of the, of the modes. And there are, are several other interesting things to mess around with inside of the menuing system up here. None of them are too uh, destructive. Like I said, just go back to your layout, put it back to def set default. And there's also support for a DX cluster, so you can find out where the DX stations are. It pops it up just in a website. It's good to have two displays going. I have this on my upper display, and then on a lower display, you can open up things like the cluster, or you could separate the satellite tracking module from this. But uh, 
as usual, there are docs, but not extensive, extensive docs on this. So take a look around and then go to the forums, hook up with other people using it, and you'll have a blast. Again, you should donate uh, to these guys because they really did a bang up job and they're in the UK. So there you go. Pretty good overview of what's going on with, with this. If you look up in the memories and all of the other menus up here, you can hit favorites, record, whatever. If you're receiving, hit add and you'll all of a sudden put an icon for it up there. You can mess with the display and a bunch of other stuff, which are an area of experimentation. So take a look at them. And uh, a lot of them are just self-explanatory. So there you go. Pretty good overview of SDR console. Now, in conclusion, um, is the SDR Play a compromised SDR receiver? Yes. All receivers known to men are compromised receivers. And that means they're a balance of performance and cost. But when you look at what this receiver does at what this receiver costs, it's an unbelievably great value. Uh, 10 times the cost to do this 10 years ago. So there you go, 10% reduction in cost to have a general coverage receiver that did all this and it didn't have a spectrum display 10, 10 or 12 years ago. So I give it two thumbs up and I cannot imagine why anybody wouldn't want to have one of these in their radio shack. Till next time, take care.